This audio is brought to you by Muslim Central. Please consider donating to help cover our running costs and future projects by visiting www.muslimcentral.com forward slash donate. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the Twins of Faith show, the show about knowledge and action. Now, before the break, we were talking about ikhlas and sincerity. Now, Sheikh was giving a beautiful, comprehensive definition of what is ikhlas, and he and Sheikh was giving a beautiful, beautiful examples of what is ikhlas and how to implement it. Now, Sheikh, before the break, you mentioned a little bit about that we should hide our good deeds and to maintain that the class to attain that the class that we should hide the good deeds mm. now a lot of people out there may think that i want to do something good i want to let's say pray sunat uh, uh, salat in the masjid but they fear they don't want to do it because because other people might be looking and then if other people are looking i'm not a class anymore so how do how does somebody um, handle that how does somebody over, overcome that Shay. Well, you know, there's a lot of uh, problems people have with ikhlas, yeah? The shaitan creates doubts in people's minds. One of the doubts that the shaitan creates is to tell people that, hey, you know what, you don't really have ikhlas, yeah? So, so don't do that deed. Now, can you see how that can actually cause you to not do a good deed? Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, to not do a good deed, who actually benefits? It's actually shaitan, first of all, isn't it? Number two, the second thing is that ikhlas, or the opposite of ikhlas, which is riya, showing off, is to do a deed or to not do a deed for the sake of people as well. Both things are actually riya. Both things are showing off. Yeah. Both things are classed as minor shirk because you actually are either doing a deed or not doing a deed because of people. Now, the easy way to get out of it, yeah, is to first of all take a moment, first rectify in your heart and speak out to Allah Azza wa Jalla that this is only for your sake, Ya Rab. That's number one. Number two, actually increase in your deed. Actually do the deed, but do it even better. Yeah. So, so are you saying that once the whispers come in, that some, uh, the shaitan instill doubts, I should do it even more? That's right. You should do it even more. How does that work? Oh, that works exactly as I said. So if you're reciting Quran, yeah, and the shaitan says, oh, you're only reciting because there's that guy in the back who's going to think you're a big sheikh. So what you do in your heart, okay, is say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Okay, make sure in your heart that you're clear. This is only for the sake of Allah. And then even make it even more beautiful. Even more beautiful. Because what shaitan wants is for you to stop. But the opposite of shaitan, what shaitan wants is what you should do. And so this is what Sufyan al rahimullah said. He said that whenever someone feels a whispering of the shaitan, he should do exactly the opposite. So if the shaitan tells him that, oh, you're only doing it because of so-and-so, Mm -hmm. then, then you increase in your beauty of your recitation. If the shaitan says, you know, you're only doing it because so-and-so is looking, you only increase in the number of ibadah that you do or the length of your salah. Mm -hmm. And you watch it goes away. Wallahi, I've tried this with myself. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, I don't get wiswas anymore. If I do, because I know, and I know the shaitan's going to know, <laughs> that hey, you whisper in my ears, you whisper in my ears, I'm only going to increase in the ibadah. So you better not whisper in my ears. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Alhamdulillah, I don't think he whispers too much in my ears in Salah, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. But try it, really, seriously. Because you find that, you know what? Initially, whenever you do a deed, it's human nature to be awestruck with people around you. I remember writing a book on the fiqh of travel. And wallahi, you know what? I still remember in, my, in the first year of travel to UK, my book, my laptop on which I was writing my book was stolen. For a year or two, I was like, subhanAllah, my book's gone. I don't have much of a, you know, updated copy of those notes that I had written regarding the book. Then as I thought and thought and thought, say, Alhamdulillah, it was stolen. Alhamdulillah, it was stolen. Alhamdulillah, I never finished the book. Because I don't think I had pure ikhlas behind it. Perhaps I was doing it, and I was just too young. I was doing it too soon. I was doing it too quickly. Yeah, perhaps I was doing it because so-and-so was writing a book, and so I wanted to also have my name on a book. Yeah? So as a person grows older and wiser perhaps, yeah, with time, that person truly realizes, Wallahi, this is the most important thing you can do with your life, mm -hmm. is to make every deed purely for the sake of Allah. And no one can take what I'm saying here lightly, because why Allah, this is the most difficult thing. Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimullah, he said, I have not tried to fix something more difficult upon myself than my intention. Nothing else that is more difficult on somebody other than his intention. 
This audio is brought to you by Muslim Central. Please consider donating to help cover our running costs and future projects by visiting www.muslimcentral.com forward slash donate. Mm-hmm.